The keep and care of thoroughbred horses are essential components in the welfare of horses that exercise in various ways, for example, trotting, cantering, and galloping. Keeping horses in good shape through effective management is an essential tool in increasing the quality of their racetrack performances and their longevity. In this video by the team from quickgallop.com and its YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper, the horse anatomy is looked at, with indicators given as to potential injuries. In addition, Jamaica Racing Commission veterinarian, Dr. Simone Johnnelly, also comments on the official color of horses in horse racing. Watch and learn. Hi, my name is Dr. Simone Johnnelly and I'm a Commission Veterinarian at the Jamaica Racing Commission. Today we are going to look at the basic anatomy of our race horse and talk about some of the common issues that they have on the racetrack and off the racetrack. This is Grape Nut. He is a gelding. He is one of our ponies that we use on our race day. And we're going to start by looking at the head. So we have our head, the eyes, the ears our muzzle with our nostrils and our mouth. We have the mane, our neck area, shoulders, the chest. Chest is, and the shoulders are a common area of, of muscle strain that can cause issues. Then we have our knee commonly, but scientifically we call it the carpus. This is another common area for bony injuries in horses, whether it's related to arthritis or possibly fractures. Then we come down into the canon area. Behind the canon, we have a lot of soft tissues, some tendons, ligaments. These are common areas of strain in race horses. And then we come down to the fetlock, scientific name. Commonly, you will hear trainers refer to this as the joint. Another common area of um, bony issues, either fracture-wise, tendon-wise, um, or arthritis. And then lower down, we have our hoof. Inside the, inside the hoof, we have the coffin bone, which is a common area for laminitis to be a problem. And that concludes the forelimb. Here, we have our withers. We have the back, a common area of muscle strain again. We have the barrel of the horse. We come into the hip area here. And then we're coming down the back leg. We have our stifle, another common joint for injuries. Then we come down and we have the hock, another common area for joint issues. The cannon bone again, the fetlock, and the hoof. And of course, our tail. Coming down from the knee or the carpus, we have our shin in the front. This is the cannon bone, commonly called the shin. And we tend to have a problem with bucked shins in this area. Behind the cannon or the shin area, you have a lot of important tendons that support this joint here, the fetlock. And what can happen here is that they tend to be strained, they tend to be swollen. And so you need the right kind of management program for racing a horse that has damage to this area because it tends to follow them through their career. It doesn't necessarily end their career, but it means they need to be well managed in order to have the longest and most fruitful racing career with these issues. Coming down past the fetlock into the hoof area, the hooves are very important to our horses. They bear a lot of weight on them. They are a thousand pounds on average and they're standing on four little bones called the coffin bones that are within the hoof. So it's very important to make sure that these horses are shod frequently as, as needed according to how the hooves are wearing. One common issue in this area is laminitis and they can't be commonly or more commonly affects the front limbs rather than the hind limbs. However, we need to make sure that it is an issue that is caught early, it is managed efficiently with diagnostics so that we can have the best possible recovery for these horses. Shoeing is an issue that can contribute or rather poor shoeing is an issue that can contribute to laminitis as well as ex excessive grain feeding. Um, any, any damage to the hoof area can lead to laminitis. Any general medical issues with horses can lead to laminitis. So it's something we have to be very careful about 
we have to keep a watchful eye on and make sure that we manage them appropriately. As we discuss more about the knee or the carpus area, it's important to know that for young racehorses coming into the racetrack at about the two-year-old age, that we examine their knees using x-rays, radiographs, to ensure that the joint spaces are closed. And what that means is that enough bony changes have been happening in that area that they have now stabilized, they're grown and they're ready to withstand the strain that comes with racing on the track, galloping, cantering, all of those activities that they haven't fully been trained to do on the farm just yet. And they need to be prepared to do that with a jockey in their back. This is breaking news. He is a bay horse or a dark bay horse. As you can see, he has a very dark brown coat and he has a black dark brown mane. Doc, um, for identification purposes with racehorses, how do you know that the horse is the exact horse that was nominated for racing? So there are three methods of identification that have been used with racehorses. The original method was the tattoo method, which was placed on the upper lip. I believe breaking news was tattooed. However, the tattoo marks have faded, so we won't be able to see all of the colors. Come on, e. Relax, relax. I don't think he wants to show us. But there are a few numbers and those will be put on their thoroughbred racing cards, those blue cards that are submitted for registration. And that is a much older method of identification. Um, the second method and our standard method that remains is markings. And that means that when they are on the farms as weanlings, the private veterinarians get called out to draw the horses as they are. And what that means is there are some very unique markings on the horses. So besides your color, besides the gender, we look for things such as whirls. So if you look closer, we will see whirls on the forehead. We see whirls just below the mane on either side. We sometimes see whirls in the neck area and sometimes on the forelimbs or anywhere else on the body. Other markings that are unique that we look for are perhaps the white markings that may show up on the lower legs. They can go usually, the highest they go is up to the hock area. Sometimes they have scattered white hairs on the rest of the body and sometimes they have white hairs on the face. The third method of identification is microchipping, which is a much more recent method. And what that means is that we get a chip that's the size of a rice grain and we insert it using a needle into the ligament just below the mane and what that does is it gives us a number that we can use to identify them and so all race horses in order to be duly registered and able to be nominated must be microchipped so that we can identify them whether it is in the Lasix barn or when they're entering the holding area, the saddling ring and definitely before they go out onto the track. It also helps us to identify them when they might be sick when, for example, when they're sick, our microchip readers allow us to read their temperature as well, which can be very important. And in the unfortunate case that a horse, racehorse or otherwise, is found outside of the racetrack, that's also when we can use our microchip to identify them along with their markings. This is Beltane. He is a chestnut horse. So as you can see, he has a brown body and a brown mane. That's how we know he's chestnut. Another registered racing color for thoroughbreds. Grape Nut is a gray horse. This is one of our registered racing colors for thoroughbreds in Jamaica. And as you can see, the body is mostly covered in gray hairs and we have a white light colored mane that accompanies. This is Messi, another gray horse, looking a little bit different to Grape Nut, who had a speckled brown spots on top of this gray coat, and he had a light gray mane, as opposed to Messi, who has a 
mixture of black and gray hairs in his mane. Okay, Doc, we want to thank you very much for taking us through this educational piece. I'm sure it's going to be beneficial to our viewers. Thanks much. It was my pleasure. Thank you for watching another video produced by the team from quickgallop.com, YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper. Please stay on the channel for more enlightening videos on those involved in local horse racing. Please like, subscribe, and press the notification bell.